every individual has a story to tell. It's this guy who grew up in Little Rock, Arkansas, um, not of really very fancy background and certainly not a whole lot of money and certainly not a whole lot of wealth or power or prestige, just some kid who was remarkably bright and was willing to work really very, very hard, very diligently to accomplish a great deal. He had struggled with racism all his life. He never appeared to be the victim. A young person shouldn't have such a burden. Rosie had this ability to rise above all of that. We were the trailblazers that uh, opened up uh, opportunities for young people like Roosevelt. Because of his exceptional character and his way of dealing with people, a great tribute, I thought, to his father and mother and, uh, and to himself. He, he was an astonishing man. I never met any young person quite like him. He was truly one of the most remarkable human beings I have ever, ever known. He had a, a combination of humanity and brilliance that you rarely find. He was someone who uh, genuinely and authentically uh, was of the present. There didn't appear to be a challenge for Roosevelt that he did not uh, um, face or attack. His limitations were never limitations in his own mind, and so they were never limitations in his life. Roosevelt is one of the most extraordinary young men that I've come in contact with at Central High School. Roosevelt is one of the finest students that I've ever taught. I think someday that he's going to be one of our country's leaders. Roosevelt was always involved in student politics at uh, Little Rock Central. He was president. Always a student, always seeking to learn. This was a man who was dedicated to scholarship. He was able to transfer his outstanding academic ability to uh, the football program. If you looked at him, you couldn't imagine he was a football player at first because he wasn't very tall at all. No, how can anybody do that? Uh, it's not humanly possible, but he could do it all. He could play ball, and he could read books. He certainly had an aura, or a, I would say a presence about him. You kind of realize that you're in the presence of a heavyweight. He knew he was really, really something, but he had enough sense to be humble about it. Rosie got straight A's at Yale, which isn't that easy to do. We were thrilled when he won the Rhodes Scholarship. He was so excited to be going off to Oxford for the Rhodes Scholarship. Rosie took public service and his commitment to public service to a degree that I haven't seen in anybody else that I've ever met. Then Governor Clinton did was uh, he took notice of, of Roosevelt, how committed to public service uh, he was. He had this uncanny ability to inspire trust and affection and loyalty. Rosie was part of the Inner Circle team. He was the one we felt that could carry all of us beyond our pettiness and our sense of prejudice towards people that were not like us. He sought justice and that, that was his life. Just uh, exactly what uh, Arkansas needed. He was the best that our generation had to offer. He was the new paradigm. Roosevelt was going to be the first black governor in Arkansas. Rosie was destined for greatness. That if he chose to do so, he could come home, be elected governor, senator, president someday. He could have done anything. He would have been uh, the first black president for this country. He seemed to me to be the embodiment of everything that was necessary to lead not only our state, but our country in a different direction where we could bridge all these racial divides. He had it. His tragic death was one of the really big events in the state over a period of time. It's the first time I think anybody black in Little Rock had seen that kind of outpouring for a black person. No, it's hard to talk about, even now. 
Roosevelt made all of us who knew him feel better and bigger and stronger. So today I pray that we think not of what he might have been, but of what he was. Not of what he might have done, but of what he did. Rosie embodied the, uh, the best that there was about humanity. He led, he led by living a life, an exemplary life um, that stood for something. His life was worth a thousand words and a thousand books and a thousand commandments. His life itself, I think, was what m made Roosevelt so very unique. I, like a lot of uh, parents, you know, saw Roosevelt Thompson as a role model for um, all kids, you know, not just certain kids, you know, not just young men, not just young African-American men, but all kids. Even at age 14 and 15, he was a role model. He always made you feel special. We could describe him as being inspired. And there's a tremendous amount of, of giving and a tremendous amount of uh, of sort of focus and loyalty towards a, a greater good that I think uh, comes from a, a compassion for your fellow human beings. For the next generation of young people, there is a story about Roosevelt Thompson that needs to be told. I think it's an important story. Without even asking to be, he became the embodiment of our hopes for uh, our better selves and a better tomorrow. 24 years later, this astonishing young man lives on in the power of his example and in the gifts others give in his name. We too can make our lives sublime and on departing leave behind us footprints in the sands of time.